Um, okay, so yesterday and the day before that, we noted that there are shitos that either entirely or almost entirely eliminate the notion of sin from what none of you did, either arguing that, no, they were really korbanot and were swallowed up in their zeal. And, you know, look, Philo is very good at writing, like, proto, like... Not in my monadia. It's like, but it's like uber philosophical, like metaphorical reads. That's, that's what he does. Um, and uh, and then we discussed the rush bomb and the expansion of uh, the rush bomb. That it was just a you know a work accident. That uh, you know they were in the wrong place at the wrong time when God's fire was you know blasting through the Mishkan, which again is not totally not their fault. Um, yeah, it seems like that was their fault. Right, right, meaning it's not totally their fault, meaning is they, they weren't as careful as they should have been in the Mikdash. So it's, in that sense, it's their fault, meaning it's, but you don't have to look for proportionality. That was really the, right. the point. Um, the majority of the Farshim, and especially the Midrashim, um, assume that they really, um, right, they, they sinned. They right. They sinned in a variety of of, uh, of ways. Um, so just to r- sort of run through them, um, and and we'll just I'll just briefly make points on where each of these come from in the psukim because right, none of these are sort of made up. The, the psukim don't tell you explicitly what their sin was. Um, okay, so some suggest that they brought um, voluntary uh, k'toret. Um, which is us, right? You can't bring voluntary k'teret. Um, again, is the punishment really death? Should it be death? Um, or, uh, maybe, right? Maybe that's such an affront to God. Or you go a little bit like the Rosh Bam, that no, you know, like without that Karach. You know, I mean, yes, it's, were they, were the 250 people who wanted to bring the well, they were supposed to die. Right? No, no, they were not. supposed to die, but the question is, how bad were they, right? And this is something that's discussed by the Mepharshim there, meaning, were they as bad as Korach, or they did it L'shem Shamayim, but even if you do L'shem Shamayim, again, uh, you make a, mis- a mistake in the Mikdash, the consequences are bad, right? Which is, there is sin, but again, I'm not sure that if you think the sin is that they brought, a, you, you could say that bringing an extra Ketoret deserves death, or you could say, again, you don't have to look for proportionality, it's just the Mikdash blows everything out of proportion because there's the added stringency created by the imminence of God, and that Mimela makes everything much worse. Again, so I don't think you have to look for proportionality, per se, uh, in strict proportionality, right? You have to understand contextual proportionality. How about that, right? Um, um, the Bukhar Shor... Um, v- being very literal in the Pesukim, just said the issue isn't the what what they brought; it was the fire, right? Literally reading the Pasuk is Aisha Zara, is that they thought that they should bring their own fire, right, rather than rely on uh, on God's fire. Now, why is that so bad? Um, so here, based on what we said two days ago, that actually is very bad, right? Very bad because the sen- the the central theme of these Pesukim is Aish, 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 Aish. God manifests himself in the Mishkan through two Aish, right? Through the fire of, that represents his presence, and through the fire that represents his willingness to accept Karbanot. For on that day, when God is showing the Jewish people that he is present, and therefore he's consuming everything with his fire, for them to bring a fire from outside is actually pretty bad, right? Because that is trying to take away the limelight from God's presence in the Mishkan and put themselves in God's place. But that's actually pretty bad when you think about the context of what Aish means um, here. Um, his alternative is that it wasn't a problem of bringing their own fire, but it was that Ktoret needs to be brought from the Aish on the Mizbeach, and they brought it from a regular source. Again, if that's it, I think you're, uh, you know, we're back to the proportionality problem. It's not impossible, right? I mean, that could be what the word Eish Zara means, you know, a fire that was strange. I assume it's only to say that in this and only the other way. Correct. I didn't mean to do that on purpose. Again, you could say it's misunderstanding, and again, you, then you could negate the problem of proportionality by saying it's the Mikdash, God's imminent, etc., etc. Look, at some level, I think that has to run through everything, right? There are some sins that do seem more egregious, depending on how much you pin 
upon them, right? Saying that they're trying to bring their fire on the day when God wants his fire to consume everything, and you understand that in context, if that is how God is manifest in the Mishkan, that's actually pretty bad, right? Um, the Barbanel suggests that the problem wasn't the fire they brought, but that they weren't supposed to do the job at all. Aaron was. Now, where does the Barbanel get that from? Think about it. Where, where, where would you get a shot like that? Uh, oh, because he goes to Aaron afterward. Like. So, my guess... I mean, I, I think the Barbanel actually says this, but I, I'd have to look again. Right, but, but if... The Barnell hadn't said it and you wanted to say it, right? Why, why would you say it? The comparison to Korach. You take the comparison to Korach strictly, right? And say, right, the sin there wasn't per se they were bringing the Ketoret. They were bringing the Ketoret in an attempt to usurp power. Right. So maybe that's what they're doing, in which case that is pretty bad, right? How do we know the comparison between this and Korach? Oh, well, both of them die when they bring the Ketoret and fire consumes them from heaven. So there is this sort of striking parallel right there, right? So you could just read this two stories in light of each other and say, oh, the problem is they're usurping Aaron's power and the punishment for challenging the Kohanic hierarchy is, is death. And that's something that actually bears itself out in the Korach and ensuing stories. Um... Um, now, several of them of Hershim, Hersh focuses on this one, just say this, the problem is simply Asher Lotzi Vahotam, right? And this is something we've talked about in the context of the Mishkan, is that the Mishkan is so... The notion that God wants physical service, right, sort of... Is weird, right? What justifies it is that God commanded it. If He didn't command it, then it is bad, right? Then it is bad. Then it borders on idolatry. Again, here I'm playing with different mafarshim. I'm just sort of outlining different approaches, right? Each mafarsh will take a slightly different twist in this. But based on what we talked about in Shemot and the, the emphasis, especially the end of Shemot, of a sher tziva, Hashem et Moshe, right? To do something which you're not commanded actually is that border idolatrous um, thing. Um, you could go farther and Kharshar and Khizkuni go this and say, right, not they weren't commanded, but they were commanded not to, right? You have to figure out, right, Asher Lot Siva, is it not commanded or right Siva Lo, right? You could you could read it that way, which would obviously be even worse, right? Assuming that there were if you um, Right, and they and they base this on on a on um, Shmot Paraglam at Pasuk Ted, right, where there is an Isser against bringing um, the the Ketoret. Um Now, certain right of the Midrashim suggest that they were drunk, right? Now, contextually, they get that from the following Sukkim, which brings the Isser. Now, obviously, that's part of the same thing, right? It's uh, the radical not showing Kavod Mishkan slash right. <laughs> you know all the problems with drinking. Uh, Insert no drinking. Yes, exactly. Insert no drinking. Um, rant. Um, the right now in the Sifra, so Bar Kapara and the Barbanel goes uh, suggest this as well. Says the problem was that they went into the Kodesh Kadashim, which carries the death penalty, or is an extremely dangerous place unless you're the Kohen Gadol. Right? It's not about what they brought; it's where they brought it to. Again, these are all sort of variations on a. On a theme, um, one day in the Vekarabah and in Tanchuma is that they weren't really punished, but they were. This was a post facto punishment for having looked at God inappropriately at Har Sinai, and God held off killing them to not mar the experience of Har Sinai. But then, when they did something slightly wrong, now God took them out, and therefore that solves the proportionality problem because you say, look, they did a minor sin here, but God was just waiting for the opportunity to execute judgment from having inappropriately looked at God yeah. there where did they get that, um, well, they get that uh, they based on their understanding there of the people who were oh, right, looking at God right? they put put them in that um, other midrash, midrashim suggest that they poskened right in front of Moshe that was really the problem was they made decisions in front of Moshe right and Moro Halach um, right? Rabo Chayev Misa right it's in the Gemara, actually. I mean, it also is in Midrash. Midrashic, I mean here, Gemara, Midrash, yes, it is, it is a Gemara in Yoma. Uh-huh. Um, um, which again, which again, what? Where did they get that for? Um, I don't know where they get any minute from. He said there's uh, sources in the 
Well, so here it's because they, right? Meaning, it's it's instead of usurping Moshe's power, uh, Aaron's power, they're seen as usurping Moshe's power. Now, remember, there is that sort of blurry line between political power and religious power at this point, especially since Moshe was the one running the Mishkan until that point, right? So there is a sort of there is a sort of sense in which maybe they're usurping Moshe's role, and it's also like uh, they're and everything the Mishkan is a shirt siva Hashem and Moshe. If they're doing something lo siva, is the focus that God didn't command it or that they are now sort of circumventing Moshe, right? Presumably that's part of what drives the, the Midrash. Um, and again, I mean, if we wanted to categorize, right, we could do this as a laundry list, but if you want to really divide it, let's just sort of bring it together because obviously other ones, right? So basically you have the people, you have the Shito who say, look, this was basically a work accident slash, or it was totally good, right? Um, they were carbonate. Now, of course, there are some people, there are a bunch of people who take a modified version of the... Um, of Philo, right? Not that it was um, not a sin, right? They were just carbon out, but um, like Refers, the beer of W. Hoffman suggests that no, it was a punishment, but like they brought it because they really, really loved Hashem. Like it was just a miscalculation, right? So at some level, it was you know carbon esque. It was a mistake, right? You know, Philo's like removes the sin. They said no, it was a sin, but it was a sin of Ahava, right? Ahava mekalkelat Ashura, even when it comes to to God. Um, the, now, one day in the Sifra actually says that it was a total miscalculation. That they brought it because they thought that God's presence wasn't coming to Mishkan, so they didn't see the fire, so they rushed in to, like, bring the fire, and, like, miscalculated the fire was about to come. Yeah. Right? So, again, it was a miscalculation. It was bad, right? But it was, right? Again, this is all sort of within, right? Father was the extreme, who exonerates them totally. But all these Midrashic and later commentary, Deo, would say, no, it was out of go- love or an attempt to honor God. Again, it was carbon-esque, it was just a mistake. So they are, they are punished. Um, or the Svarno suggests maybe they thought that the um, they were supposed to bring this this Ktoret, um, just like there's a you know daily a, a carbon. Uh, you know, we could come up with all all different all, all, all um, right now. All these days, we'll say that yeah. I mean, even if they made a mistake, they're still somewhat bekrovaya kadesh. I'll read it as yeah. They were karbanot. They were close to me, right? This is what Rechor Shor Beer of Hirsch or those who Hoffman all say. They right that this was quasi carbon. So there's that whole school, right? That this is either mamish not a sin or it is a sin, but basically an expression of their love for God. Right. Then there are people who look for proportionality and say no, they were arrogant, right? How Shadal takes it, right? They were trying to replace Aaron. They're trying to replace. Moshe, they were they were drunk, right? And they actually say no, they really did something egregious, right? Or the other way of looking for proportionality is to say this wasn't such a bad sin, but it was a holdover, right? That's right. That, and then there are the people who say they sinned or they made a mistake, but it wasn't proportional. It was because the mikdash is really a dangerous place and a slight miscalculation, right? Right, which is some of the sins listed in the Midrashim. And the extreme version is the Rashbam, right? There wasn't a sin at all. It was a work accident, right? Like Uzzah, who tried to grab, grab the Aron, right, led to his death. So that's sort of like, right, a schematic approach. And again, many of the Parshim will find Deus in between, um, but I think probably tomorrow we should start with something else in the Parsh because you really could go on another video forever. Um, so just to give, this is just sort of a basic overview of a bunch of the Deus and sort of organizing them a bit thematically.